Hello everybody, welcome to Little Wooly Things. My name is Wendelica Klein and um, I am your host here. This is a knitting and crochet podcast mostly. Um, you can see my sewing machine back here. I do, I do sew a little bit, not very often. Uh, although I was sewing recently with my uh, younger kids, they wanted to make some bags to put their music and stuff in for orchestra class. So um, that was kind of a fun project. But that's not what we're talking about today. Um, I do have some show notes today, which is nice. This is um, episode 13 of Little Woolly Things. That's kind of exciting. And today is April 28th. Uh, if you would like to find me on social media, you can find me as Little Woolly Things all over the place. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, of course, where you have found me, I, I assume. <laughs> Um, I also have some patterns at Nitpicks in their independent designer program. And you can find more of my stuff on Etsy and also in my Ravelry store. And it's all under Little Wooly Things, so it makes it easy for you to understand. Um, so I'm feeling kind of scattered today. My kids are up the hill playing with our neighbors for a little while. This is actually the second time I am attempting to record this episode, um, I tried to a few days ago, I guess it was the 25th, and um, it was just a miserable failure. <laughs> I couldn't even bring myself to post it. I couldn't even bring myself to save it and look at it later. I just deleted the whole thing and decided to start over again. Um, so, here we go. Episode 13, take 2 things I forgot to mention on my last podcast, you know, the one that I actually posted and let you see, um, I have a double point needle cozy that was made for me by Roberta of Steel City Stitcher, and I wanted to show that off to you. Um, hmm. And do you think I can find it now? Well, when I find it, I'll, I'll um, show it off. It's got to be here somewhere. Like I said, I'm really scattered and... Uh, I just totally missed showing it to you last time, and I intended to, and now I don't even know where it is, because I got everything out to do my podcast last time, and I had everything all done, and you know, after you've shown something, then you think, oh, I don't have to keep this in my little pile of stuff that I'm going to show on my podcast, I can just use it. So it's on a project somewhere, I think, and when I come across it, um, I'll say, hey, this is the one I was talking about. <laughs> Today's coffee is um, one that I roasted yesterday. It is a Mexican organic Haltenango coffee. It is very yummy, and because I am having a hard time settling down and getting into this episode, I thought it would be a great time for me to pause for a second, drink some coffee, and uh, get my thoughts under control a little bit. So, hold on a second while I get my brain in order. Mm, I roasted this um, just 30 seconds into second crack. If you've ever done any coffee roasting, um, you know what that means. It means that the fruity flavors have come to fruition, and we are just just starting to get into the roastiness of the, the roast. So this is an excellent one. And it is one that I carry in my Etsy shop if you're interested in trying some of my home roasted coffee beans. They are very good. And each day the flavor changes just a little bit as it uh, releases some of the carbon dioxide that, um, that happens as the coffee rests. So I wanted to tell you about um, my my finished object, the only finished object that I have to talk about, and I don't even have it here to show you. So, uh, yeah, sorry for the tease. But anyway, um, it was a baby blanket for my brand new grandson. And he's the sweetest little thing. He's so cute. And I made it in this really chunky Plymouth Yarn Company... Encore Mega. This is one of my leftover skeins. This one is, it, they recommend a size 15 needle. Um, the largest needle I had was a size 13, so that's what I used. Um, and I have this brown color, and I have this green, 
I don't know what the color names are. Oh, let's see. Here's another one. They're just numbered. 7161 is this nice orange with some pops of gold in it. And then I think there was a blue. Oh, yes, this beautiful marbly blue and tan. And I made a log cabin block. Just one large block um, blanket, baby blanket. And um, it's kind of funny because I started with, pardon me, I dropped my needle on the floor. Okay, I started with, not this one. I might not even have it in this bag anymore. It was my um, tulip interchangeable, oh, here it is. I do have it in here. My tulip interchangeable circular needle. Uh, this was the biggest needle that I had not really big enough to knit a whole baby blanket with. Not if you're going around and around in a log cabin design. I didn't think about that when I picked this up. I just thought, oh, I can squish the needles and make it fit, right? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. So um, I got to the point where I just couldn't squeeze the needles onto this anymore. And so I went to my local yarn shop and I bought this. And this is, what brand is this? Knitter's Pride, maybe? It's another bamboo, size 13, which is a nine millimeter. And um, so I thought I would do the first needle on two sides and then this needle on two sides, you know, to make a square. And um, the, the thing about this chunky yarn is that it really doesn't compress well. It wants to stay big and chunky, even on your cable needles. So I ended up ordering from Amazon. No, I think these are the ones that I ordered from Amazon. Anyway, I ended up ordering two more sets of size 13 um, circular needles. And I don't know, this is a 36, maybe, 36 inch cable, I'm not sure. Uh, because I don't have the packaging in front of me and my measuring eyeballs aren't that great. Anyway, um, so now I have four sets of size 13 circular needles. I've never ever knitted a project in needles this big before and I'm not sure if I ever will again. I still have this from my set, my, my uh, interchangeable needle set and I have these two, and I have the other one I bought at my yarn shop. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do with all of these. So if anyone is interested in doing a needle swap with me, if you would actually use 9mm size US 13 um, circular needles, just let me know if you have something smaller that you don't think you'll ever use because you prefer to use you know, bigger needles and bigger yarn. Um, yeah, let me know and we'll, we can do a swap because I wouldn't mind switching one of these or, or maybe even two of these out for um, something smaller, like size fives or size two or, you know, something smaller. Um, size zeros, if there's anybody out there who thinks they will never ever use their size zero circular needles, I would. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, let me know. Um, and I will put a picture of the finished baby blanket. Well, sort of. I don't have a picture of the whole baby blanket. I have just like some little teaser shots that I posted on Instagram because I didn't want my daughter to see it before I had it finished and actually gifted to her. Um, but I can give you an idea of what it looks like right here. Okay, so speaking of my local yarn shop, last Saturday, which was a week ago um, from today, was local yarn shop day. So I played hooky a little bit. I don't often get to just go hang out at the yarn shop and knit with people, but um, I needed to go to town and do some grocery shopping anyway. So I thought, you know what, I will just go see what's happening at the yarn store and I actually met up with a friend who I haven't seen in a while and we got to sit and chit chat and show off our projects and um, I got to meet some new people I had never met before 
And I also picked up some yarn while I was there, of course, because you should always support your local businesses. So let me show you. I have two skeins of yarn that were already in my possession. And I wanted to buy something that would go along with um, along with that because I really want to make myself a summer top. Actually, I'd like to make myself two or three summer tops. Um, but I have this one from Mitchell's Creations. And this one is Dreamin' of Rhinebeck. It's a beautiful fingering weight. I've shown this to you before. Um, and I love it. This is, these are my colors right here. I mean, this is it. So I also have this one from Hypnotic Yarn. And this one is called Electric Peach. Electric Peach also. Um, some of my favorite colors. And it's also got some brown in there to set off that peach and pink. So this is what I got at my yarn shop. I picked up a skein of Malabrigo sock, which is 440 yards to three and a half ounces. It says eight stitches per inch. Um, and the colorway is Arbol. And it's just, I mean, coffee colors. How could you go wrong with that? Right? You got espresso, you got some latte. <laughs> Beautiful browns. Okay, so, beautiful browns with electric peach. I hope that's not blowing out too much. Or should I do beautiful browns with Dream of Rhinebeck? I don't know. I also have ordered some yarn um, from from Dragon Horde yarn that I'm thinking might, might perhaps blend with this combination. Wouldn't go with Electric Peach, but I'll show it to you when it gets here. It should be here um, definitely by the next time I podcast. It has been shipped, so it'll be here soon. Um, and then also I wanted to talk about um, a fundraiser that is being done by Melissa of Honeybee Knits. And I'm mentioning it here because I also ordered one of these skeins from Melissa. Um, she's doing a fundraiser to help the family of a friend of hers who recently died of esophageal cancer. And so um, her last update on Instagram said that she had raised and donated over $2,000 to her friend's family to help pay for medical expenses and things. And so um, I just thought it was a really great way for Melissa to honor her friend and to help out her family and um, and you know how easy is it for me to buy a skein of yarn and make a, a donation to this family when they really need some help and support so um, I don't know if Melissa still has this listing open or not um, but you could check it out her Etsy shop is Honeybee Knits and um, I am I'm really anxious to see what she came up with to honor her friend with. I don't know what the skein is going to look like, so I'll show it to you when I when I get it. That'll be here by the next podcast. Anyway, um, if it happens to blend with one of my other yarns here, then I will definitely put that into my summer top project, and I think that would be great. So um, while I was at the yarn store, I also, speaking of summer tops, picked up three skeins of Universal Yarn Ink. Cotton Supreme DK Sea Spray. And I just really love the mottled look of this. The deep blue and um, it's not really a gray. It's just like places where the blue didn't didn't take the dye, the, the yarn didn't take the dye as, as intensely. So it's not really white, it's not really gray, it's just like a really pale blue. And this one is 100% cotton. Is this mercerized cotton or just cotton? It just says 100% cotton and the colorway is ink blue. It is 230 yards to 100 grams. Um, and so the, the pattern that I, I was thinking of for this, I'm gonna show it to you, is called Literally Over the Top. And I've 
got this on Ravelry last summer, actually. It's just a very simple, um, like a tank top pattern. Starts at the ribbing of the front, goes up the body, um, bind off for the neckline, over the shoulders, pick up stitches, and continue down the back, and then seam it up the sides. So I thought that was really clever and um, sounded simple. But the pattern is written for fingering weight yarn, not DK weight yarn. So I did myself a little gauge swatch here with the lace pattern that um, is written into the, into the design. And I really like it. I think it's cool. Um, it seems stretchy and comfy, but I haven't washed and dried this yet and blocked it out. My minimal size swatch. I was knitting this up during kids' violin lessons, so um, I just wanted to get it bound off and in the washer so I can wash it and dry it and see what this yarn is going to do, how it is going to behave. Because I have worked out the changes that I would need for the uh, difference in gauge um, at this gauge, but uh, I want to make sure that I have this washed and dried and all that so I know what the final gauge is actually going to be. I don't want to spend the time knitting up a sweater for myself to have it not fit. So one vote for gauge swatches. <laughs> I really don't like taking the time to do them, but I have learned recently how important they are and how much valuable information they give you. So let's see. We are up to whips. Um, this I can almost count as a whip. I am going to cast that one on soon. Uh, I am working on a new design and it is frustrating me right now. And I put it in timeout uh, because I got really, really frustrated with it. <laughs> and I'm sure that you guys understand how when you're working on something and you really want it to come out just right and you really don't want to uh, rip it out and start all over again, but then something happens and you have to. That's where I'm at right now. Um, I can show you some things about it. I am going to publish this. I really wanted to work it up quickly so that I could publish it in time for you guys to knit this up for yourselves for this summer. Um, but right now, the way it's going, it might be a while before I have it ready to publish. Anyway, it starts off with a square yoke of linen stitch. I think I showed this to you last time, maybe. Um, and I love linen stitch, and I really love it in this cotton yarn. It's fabulous, and I really love the way this sleeve turned out. Really, really do. It has a lace design down the sleeve, down the shoulder, I mean. Um, it has the same lace design in the back, starting at the back of the yoke. But this sleeve, this is what I worked on last night. And I was so excited because I was making progress and I was double checking on my numbers and everything was coming out the way I wanted it to. And then I held it up. Let's see if you can see this. You can see the issue. The issue is in the placement of the lace. See this one? The lace is down on the front of the sleeve. This one, the lace is at the top of the sleeve. They don't line up at all. And I should have known that when I, when I was picking up my stitches back here. I should not have waited till I was way out here to notice that. But um, I was staying up and I was knitting in the middle of the night and it's just frustrating that I stayed up so long working on it only to have to rip it out again. So, you know, it's all my own fault. There's no problem with the pattern necessarily. Uh, I'm just frustrated because I made that stupid mistake. And you know, even experienced knitters make dumb mistakes. Seriously, it just happens. But um, anyway, I am, on a, a, a more happy note, using my stitch markers from, from, oh gosh.
I had her nitty by nature. <laughs> <laughs> these little coffee bean stitch markers make my day and I think that they're going to be on every project I ever do from here until eternity unless something happens and they break but I don't think they're going to do that so um, that is my frustration whip right now and it is in timeout as I said and while it is sitting in timeout I decided that I'm not even going to knit today I'm going to crochet and no nope, that's the wrong bag that's the bag with the well, cabin blanket stuff Okay, here is my Little Wooly Things bag. Ta-da! The one and only. If anyone is interested in ordering one of these bags, I would gladly have one made for you. But um, I'm not going to buy a whole bunch of them and put them in my Etsy shop to have them just gather up dust because it doesn't have any um, catchy, funny sayings or anything on it. It just says littlewoolythings.com. And, um, you know, I feel perfectly fine parading around with my bag that says Little Woolly Things on it. But, um, you know, you guys, <laughs> I don't expect anyone else to. However, if I could come up with a witty saying to go on um, a canvas tote bag, I will definitely um, put something like that together. So, anyway, that was a side note. Side note, I am crocheting myself a basket. I am using three strands of whatever bulky acrylic yarns I can find in my stash. Okay, so, um, you know, and I'm, as I run out of one, I'll, I just grab another color and throw it in there. So, I am crocheting around some cotton clothesline to give it some um, stiffness, some support. And I'm just doing single crochets around and around and around and around and around and around and around. And eventually I'll, I'll do some handles, work some handles into it. Um, I made one of these for my sister-in-law for Christmas and I can show you a picture of it right here. And she loved it and I really loved the way it turned out. So I thought, since I'm frustrated with my knitting, I will crochet and make myself one of these awesome baskets. So that is what I am working on. I just joined um, this Barcelona <laughs> Loops and Threads Barcelona and I don't know what the colorway is Heartbeat the colorway is Heartbeat so that's um, already blending interestingly in with the greens and the brown that I already have in there we shall see I think the next one that I that I add into it is going to be maybe some burnt orange and some gold, unless I change my mind. Well, I, it's just one of those scrappy projects. I'm just going to, you know, pull out whatever yarn suits my fancy at the time and finish it when I feel like it. <laughs> no pattern. Um, let's see. All right, I am also waiting on some yarn to arrive any day from Cassie of Big Sky Yarn Co. We are doing a collaboration that I'm super excited about. I have the pattern just about finished. I just need the yarn in my hands so that I can work out the gauge and um, get it all finalized, knit up some samples, and put it out there for you guys for test knitting and then eventually for sale. Um, so. Keep your eyes open for that. It will be coming soon, I hope. Um, I am also going to be adding to my My Cat Walks All Over Me um, series. Right now there are uh, socks in two lengths in the My Cat Walks All Over Me. There is um, a pattern for fingerless mitts that goes along with that. And there is going to be something else coming up. And I'm thinking about putting them together as an ebook. Uh, pattern collection. <laughs> I've never done anything like that before. It's kind of exciting, it's kind of scary, and um, exciting. I'm looking forward to getting that put together and maybe playing with some layout and making it look pretty, and um, I may need some test knitters for this next one. I, I haven't actually started writing this one out yet, so this is future projects. Um, maybe towards the end of summer that will be coming along and um, then I have I do I have a, a series of patterns 
planned out that I'm going to be working on into the fall and um, eventually I will need test knitters for them so please if anyone is interested in being on Team Wooly and test knitting for me send me an email Wendy W-E-N-D-E -E, at KleinArt.com that's C-L-I-N-E-A-R-T and um, I will then send you the more information and um, you are definitely not required or obligated to test knit every single pattern that comes out. If you are interested, then I will send you the information. Okay, so, oh, the last thing that I have for you all, the very last thing before we say goodbye, is a stitch marker giveaway that I announced on the last podcast. Um, I don't have it here with me. All right. Here's another interruption. Hold on a so, second. Now I have everything together. Got it all together. All right. The stitch marker giveaway. Are you ready? Oh, I'll show you what we're giving away first. We're giving away this cute little stitch marker case that says, whoops. Shh, I'm counting. And it has uh, some of those little light bulb shaped stitch markers in there and along with that we have a set by Knitty by Nature Shop and it is a cute little honeybee progress keeper Let's see if I can get close enough for y'all to see it honeybee progress keeper a little birdie on a branch stitch marker and then some ring style stitch markers here. A little um, ring for keeping them all together. And of course, a bulb stitch marker with a little bead on it. All of that. I don't know if it's gonna focus or not. It's quite cute. Oh, let's turn the bee, honey bee and the honeycomb around so you can actually see it. And that is from Knitty by Nature Shop. So that is part of the giveaway. Now I used random number generator to pick a winner. And are you ready? The winner is Sheila E. So Sheila E, who commented on episode 12, let me know your uh, mailing address and I will ship this off to you as soon as possible. So, congratulations! I love sending things away to people. I really, really do. I wish that I could send gifts to all of my, my viewers. It would be great, but I can't. So, anyway, um, I never did find that DPN cozy. Hmm, well, let me tell you that Roberta of Steel City Stitcher makes the cutest DPN cozies, needle keepers, whatever you want to call them. I think you should check out her Etsy shop. Definitely. Steel City Stitcher. It's awesome. Actually, she made it as a custom order for me. I saw that she had done some bags with this cute coffee and tea themed fabric, and I messaged her and said, oh, can you make a DPN cozy for me with that fabric? And she said, sure. And she sent it to me, and it's awesome, and I love it. So, there you go check out Steel City Stitcher on Etsy. Um, and besides that, I think, I think that's it. I think I'm done. So have a wonderful day or night, whatever time you're watching this. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all my returning viewers for supporting me. Thank you to any new viewers who hung in there through this whole scattered episode and you're still here. I appreciate it very much. Hit the uh, like button, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And um, yeah, I guess have a great day, enjoy your knitting, and I will see you soon. Bye!